So it's time to put what we've learned about slopes and y-intercepts and linear relationships to the test with an actual example. So we have this real life example that we saw before in an earlier section, section 4.1. This is the fertility rate and the life expectancies for the countries in 1962. All right, now the first thing I'm asking you to do is to explain the meaning of the slope in the context of the situation and remember to include units. Ah, okay. Well, let's start off before I go back and grab the script. What's the slope? Where is the slope? You don't expect me to put all those dots into a computer, right? And the answer is nope. It was given to you right here, right? So, as a matter of fact, let me highlight for you. The slope is whichever one is multiplied by the x. So that's the slope, the negative 4.6711. The y-intercept is actually that number, right? But we'll just leave that for a little bit later. Okay, so the slope is right there. So let me write this. So slope is negative 4.6711. Now what we could think about this is that this is really negative 4.6711 over 1, right? Because any number is over 1 if you want it to be. And that helps us think about the relationship that we want to see when we think about the rise and the run, right? So, and the script. So on average, if x increases by 1, the y is expected to increase or decrease by approximately a and include units. Okay, so let's think about this. Oh, and I should say, um, I'm going to put it right over here, use the script. Okay, on average, if uh, a country has a higher fertility rate, right, on average, if x, well, if I look at the script, it says if x increases by 1, right, so the country has a higher fertility rate by 1, so... births per woman so has a higher fertility rate or if the fertility rate increases by one. I will say that the script as it is in many cases is a it's not a hard and fast rule it's more uh, a guide <laughs> a guideline so if a country has a higher fertility rate by one birth per woman then we expect, right, so let me just, so you can see the script, on average if x increases by 1, so I didn't quite write it like that because that was just a little awkward for this particular context, so I'm saying if a country has a higher fertility rate by 1, higher fertility, x increases by 1, so that's what this is saying right here, this is saying if x increases by 1, And then the country part is just giving it context, right? So x increases by 1, and then there's a unit right there. Then we expect the life expectancy of that country Right, that's why to, okay, now this is a negative value, so I'm going to say decrease by 4.6711 years. Years was the unit. Okay, so when x increases by one unit, the y, that's here, this is the life expectancy, that's y, of that country is going to decrease. We choose decrease because it's going down, and there's the unit right there. y decreases. And I guess I'll make a note here. This is the word decrease because the slope is negative, right? If the slope is positive, you choose the word increase. If the slope is negative, you choose the word decrease. And 
I, I will say what I said earlier. Scripts are lovely, um, but they're giving you the general pattern that you're trying to follow, but you can't be so wedded to it that the English doesn't make sense, right? That your sentence doesn't make sense. So I didn't quite say it exactly the way that the script writes it. So the script says, on average, if X increases by one, okay, but that's X in context, right? Fertility of a country. So if the fertility of the country increases, is higher by one, then the life expectancy, the Y, will, and then you have to choose increase or decrease. That's why it says increase or decrease. You have to choose based on whether it's positive or negative. All right, now, what about the y-intercept? All right, I'm going to do this to you a lot. I'm going to explain, um, I'm going to write, explain why it doesn't make sense, because it doesn't. So let's talk about that. So the y-intercept, the value for the y-coordinate of the y-intercept is right there. Now, the y-intercept is actually a point. Points, as you can see, require two coordinates. I need to know that I go over 2.9 and up 65 to get to that point. So a y-intercept will be 0, comma that one. A lot of students get that wrong. right? They'll just write the number, but the number alone is not the y-intercept. Intercepts are points, so it's always 0, comma, and then it would be the value. Right? That's B. B, right? So if A is your slope, B is your y-intercept. Matter of fact, I could put that right up here. So this is A, and this is 0, comma, B. It's always 0, comma. Now, when I write, explain why it does not make sense, which, again, will happen to you frequently. Not always, but frequently. What that means is you have to explain why it makes no sense. I wrote it right here. Um, explain why it does not make sense with the context that you're given. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's usually the zero that doesn't make sense. So let's think about this for a second. What is this? This is x. This is x is 0, y is 81.51. But what was x? x is the fertility rate of a country. So this is fertility, and this is life expectancy. So that doesn't make any sense, because how can a country exist if it has a fertility rate of 0? That would mean literally no babies are being born in that country. I believe there's a sci-fi movie called Children of Men that talks about something like this, which is quite good. Um, but right, that's what that's not making sense. So you got to look very carefully for these. Don't just fall into the trap of writing the script. Sometimes you'll write the script, and you can see I'm kind of hinting at it, what it would be. If the fertility was zero, the life expectancy would be 81, right? And put units on that. But that doesn't make sense in this context. So you'll get points just for explaining why it doesn't make sense. It's impossible for a country to have, and it's the fertility, right? It's the x-axis variable that's zero, to have a fertility rate of zero births per woman. That makes no sense. No country has that. All right, last bit. So suppose the United States had a life expectancy of 70.21 years in 1962. Calculate the expected fertility rate back then. Oh, crafty. OK, so <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit, um, we're not going to do a ton of these in the course, but you might have one, so you want to know how to do it. So life expectancy was the y, right? If you look up at the graph, maybe I should have labeled these. This is the y, this is the x, right? That's the way we draw these graphs. So life expectancy is the y. So when they say the life expectancy is 70.21, then they're giving you the y value, and they're asking you, calculate the expected fertility rate. In other words, find x. It's an algebra problem. It's a hidden algebra problem. All right.
So now we're going to do that algebra problem. <laughs> okay, so think about the equation. The equation is, um, I'm just trying to think about where to put this, y equals negative 4.6711x plus 81.51. So then we would put 70.21 in here because we know that that's 72.21. It's given to us. And that equals negative 4 point, sorry, negative 4.6711x plus 81.51. And to keep my color coding correct here, I'll put that in pink. 711x x is what I'm looking for. And now this is just a basic algebra problem. We have to solve this for x. So the first thing you have to do is get rid of this 81.51 that's just hanging out there on its own. So you subtract 81.51 from both sides. So I'm going to go grab Desmos and do that. All right, so in Desmos, I'm going to type 70.21 take away 81.51 and I get negative 11.3. Okay, so then these two values become negative 11.3 that equals negative 4.6711x. Now the operation here on the right side is multiplication. I mean math professors don't say that but it's implied, right? This is really a multiplication here and the way to undo multiplication is to divide. So you divide both sides by that value because, because you can't, of course, do it to the left without doing it to the right and vice versa. So 6711, 46.6711 divided by itself just goes away. That becomes 1. So now I'm going to have Desmos find negative 11.3 divided by negative 4.6711. And it's okay that one negative is out in front and the other negative is in the denominator, it's the same thing as if I put the negative up here and the negative down here. It's going to work out the same way because a negative divided by a negative will be positive. So it's positive 2.419 or 2.42. So x, which is what I was looking for, x is all that's left over here, is approximately, because I'm going to round it, 2.42. So the expected fertility rate was 2.42 births per woman. Always got to include the unit if you have a unit, which we do in this case.